After Jessie became very serious about her painting, after Jessie's first exhibitions of um, representing herself as a model in, the, in all different contexts, but obviously that emphasizing very much the childhood experience she had as a model in her mother's photographs along with her siblings, the idea just suddenly clicked that a collaboration between them might, might be the right thing to do. So I called Sally up and I asked her about it. And separately, I asked Jesse. I mentioned it to Jesse in New York. And Sally said, well, you can come up and talk to me about it, but I'll, I, I probably won't do it. It was, uh, it was a good first step. Oh, it should be like, but that makes it weird to clap. It's just so both cameras can be synced up. Okay. Back. Okay, so one of the things that drew me to this project is that I've been interested in the overlap between photography and painting, and especially abstract painting, and the way photography is becoming increasingly abstract, and like ways to sort of blow up that overlap, and how it's happening, and why it's happening. So the, you know, the printing issue, I think, defines mom's photography, and makes it, to me, almost paintings. More where it's a about abstract principles like surface and accident and these things that, you know, Jackson Pollock pioneered, but she's doing it with photography. Well, we're going to come back tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but I need to, I'm going to bring my camera, I don't want to bring my camera bag right now. Okay, well, why don't you do it now just so we can leave from the house and I'll go up and get mom ready. Okay. Okay. All right, okay. We'll be in the um, car. Out of the developer fast. Oh, I get it. Because the black, the, um, it'll just go all the way to black. It goes all the way to black. The little lines do. Yeah, the little lines go. As soon as you see the little lines go, you can just sort of take it out of the developer. Mm -hmm. Then you any longer, and then you can lose the little lines. All right. But the painted on developer is really the way to go. Yeah, I think yeah, so for too. Both I think so. And then the scrubbing of the fixer, which releases that all that silver. Mm -hmm. Silver. It's, yeah. Wow. I had this lighting residency. I didn't, I did a lot of traveling with the lights, but um, this guy in New York named Steven Weber, Weber was opening this club called Love. And he had put a lot of money into the lighting system and he was a fan of my work and he basically begged me to come to work for him. I mean, it was a small room so I could manipulate it. So. Basically, things started breaking down over time, and it was such a small space, it wasn't really bringing in the income to fix this, you know, $10,000 light fixture, $20,000 light fixture. So I had to improvise. So Stephen had given me a laser for, like, a gift. He said, here, I have something for you, and it was a little laser pointer. And um, I started playing with it. I, like, put it through a bottle of water. I started testing the laser on different surfaces, and sort of watching how the beams would break up and do their thing. And so I started with a prism, and then I started with six prisms, and then I started putting other mirrors around the, the room to create a grid. And I would just play these. I got another laser pointer, and I just started playing the lights. Just and like move it maybe out. Okay. Think about how you're gonna do that without standing on the paper. Like this. Okay. All right. Okay. Closing the door. Shut the door. Turn off the lights. Roll out the paper to thirty. 
40. 40 by 50. 50. It's 50 wide, so we'll roll it out to 40. And, and then, cut. yeah, so we're going to roll it out to 40 and then cut an inch off so it's two inches off, so it's 40 by 40. Yeah. So, Liz, I think we're about ready to go. Are we? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Look at that. These, these gloves are going to be really tight. Stick Look at that. That's the plan. I said this is a long way from the electric circus. Yeah. The light shows. We started to uh, queued up some Motar and Beethoven. Beethoven. Okay, are we ready to go? No. Okay. I'm going to close the door. Yeah. It's not bad to cushion, hold down the right. within the trough and the hole. Yeah, The bottom's going to get black if we let it or stay in all the way. Just yeah, like that. There's that. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Actually, that's doing really cool stuff. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, less in the middle now. I'm half of mine to get this into the wash real quick. Yeah, because it's going to keep quick. developing. Yeah, get it into the wash. All right. Got one on. What about the big white section in the middle? Give it a second. Don't wash this section yet, Jesse. Bonfire prints are any print that's been printed that hasn't come out perfectly. So it's got a scratch or it's too light in the corner or, or a tiny speck that you need a magnifying glass yeah. to see. Really, it's like for every final print that goes on the wall, there's been 50 produced from the beginning to the end in terms of testing and ch checking and lighter or darker or this or that. So much of the Mom's work is in the printing. I saw that. Are there actually four of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, two, two, three, three. Terrible color. Just four, four. four. You want that one? Yeah. nice not to have to worry about how you handle them. <laughs> you never handle them like this, I promise you. Banging them into the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> but then why would you come back tomorrow? Because we're going to do another round tomorrow. Oh, I didn't know that. Remember you said that you had, a, you had someone coming in the afternoon, and so I said that we'll just break it up into two days, do, oh. do what we can in the morning, right. go down to the cabin, get out of your way for the rest of the day. Yeah, he couldn't come. He, um, had, a, he had a... Okay. Uh, Competition in Washington. Well, I still think we should do it that way because it gives us time to think, you know, 
sleep on it and see what we what worked, what right. didn't work, do it again. But it, um, well, well, let's wait and see. Yeah, let's wait and let's see. Wait let's wait and see how these here. work with yeah. the ones you have. You know, well, now that I'm thinking about it, it might make really nice. And we'll just leave these out, like, actually. Ah. Do like one, two, and build toward the middle. That might be the way to go. Yeah, it's a little. It's huge. Know, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it would make for a giant. Right. What would it be? Uh, 120. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. 120 inches. Well, Ray would love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he's got this idea of footprints and everything. Is that? Oh, we'll talk. We'll cross that bridge. Okay, but my final thought is. Mm -hmm. You've done six. Mm -hmm. Do you want to, would it be smart to take like a digital picture of the six you've done and go through the book and see what landscapes actually speak to the ones you already have? I think we can take these down there, pair them up. Okay. I think it's going to be a matter of, I think it's going to be more a matter of like sitting down with them and okay. looking for the scratch that's, or a continuing line or okay. something. Well, then we'll come back up here. We may come back up here. We may not come back up here, but we will come back up here and put them away tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. okay. That seems good. If you take two continuums, the continuum of photography and the, the, the far edges, which would be, I guess, my mom and like Hiroshi Sugimoto and these really sort of abstract photographers, and then blend it with painting where it's moving towards photography like Richter and sort of explore that area of overlap where it begins yeah. to be its own territory. And so, the, you know, this project was ideal and the bonfire prints make perfect sense because so the rejects in the printing department, they've got some printing error, but in a way that just draws attention to the fact that the, to the delicacy of the printing yeah. and, the, and the importance of it. It is a more literal yeah. pairing, but there's something. But this is what I don't. That's what I don't want to do. Actually, I like these two more together. I think that. Yeah. Yeah, I like these. I like two. these two together. That's how I feel about that one. So you'll be making more, so we'll see. But yeah, I kind of like the bigger. idea of these two. But I love just seeing these two. Indeed, I think these two, two might be it because yeah. we have this motion yep. and we have yeah. this motion, and they really. Okay. Okay, so we've got two pairs to go with. Good. Well, there's comparisons, but then there's just the things the eye makes on its own. Yeah. Right? This, this is, is like a chance I, operation. You see things here, you. and then you're looking here, and then you begin to discover things that are happening in them. That you say, well, is that connected? Is that? But it doesn't matter whether it happened by complete chance or accident, or whether it's part of the intention of the piece. It creates a new meaning. I mean, this is it creates a new connection. None of it seemed forced. Like, I, I, like, you say workshop, and in my mind, the back of my mind, sometimes there's that, you know, oh, it's forced, you're forced into this environment. But, you know, when you respond in it, it just became so... You know, it flowed. And then and the natural element played a big part. The environment, the nature, the inconsistency yeah. of the weather. Like, all of these things really sort of added to the overall just going with the flowness of it. And, you know, nothing could be planned too far in advance. Well, but the focus, the nice thing with being out there was that that was our only focus. Something like that would be impossible to facilitate in the city because of all of the distractions of, you know, going here, going, you know, everyone meet at this apartment, you're in a cram space, you're dealing with, it's a whole other set the of... the silence of the mountains, that peacefulness, that like, well that's when Ray was like, well we can do it here, we can do it, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Not having the distractions and just being... Just the space, just, just being able to step outside and, and orient yourself, I feel like the art we're making is relevant to natural pattern and structure and to be able to step out and look at something that is so immediately 
There's a rhythm to it all, you know? Yeah, exactly. There's a flow it's and like a rhythm. like listening to the music and then writing down the lyrics kind of a thing. Well, and it just, you know, you could just make art anywhere, and it's like your environment really does affect, affect you. Affect you.